what you want. The reason she doesn't have many tail feathers is because a raccoon tore them off. One of the most common questions I get asked about tanning is what material should someone use in their area to tan leather? Well, it just so happens that I just published a huge blog post on this subject. It's basically a long giant list of materials and notes and book chapters. I'm going to tell you where to find that, some thoughts on where to get materials, and some thoughts on experimenting and how to go about testing new materials that you're trying out. This is a floppy, heavy, wet, kind of smelly, fresh deer skin, which I just got out so I can turn it into this. A beautiful, supple, warm, soft, sexy an amazing smelling piece of leather. So how do we take this and make it into this? The magic ingredient exists in plants all over the world. It is called tannic acid. It is contained in this oak bark, which is what I tanned this with. In this fir bark, in this willow bark, these manzanita leaves, these walnut hulls, according to my list that I just published, uh, these contain 20% tannin. This wilty floppy artichoke leaf, acorn caps, acorns, and green persimmons. All of those materials are growing within 200 yards of me. Will they all work, make the best leather? Well, we'll talk about that. So if I put that raw skin on the ground out here in the rainy season like it is now, by the end of the winter there's not going to be much left. If I throw this on the ground, along with this piece of bark, my guess is that this will actually outlast the bark. This is not just skin anymore, it's leather. It's a compound material between collagen and tannic acid. Collagen is what skin is mostly made up of. It's the same thing that gelatin and hide glue are made from, which are basically the same thing. And in the hide, it consists of fibers that are interlocked. The tannic acid goes in there, it binds to those fibers and actually builds little bridges across the microfibers, and it totally changes the character of the skin. If I get this wet, it won't want to dry hard. What's this? rawhide. This is a deer skin. This is what they look like if you just dry them. It is actually incapable of interacting with water in the same way that that is. And it's obviously rot resistant. Even in my compost pile, which is a place where you put things to rot them faster, I'll throw scraps of this stuff in there, dig them out the next year and throw them back and just dig them out year after year and they just kind of look a little worse each year, but it's amazing how durable they are. And of course the word tannin comes from tanning. Tanning came first. The process of tanning came first. Then the word followed. They said, oh, look at this stuff we discovered. This must be what tan skins. We'll call it tannic acid. I had to wash that stinky raw hide off my hand. So what's cool about this list is, uh, well, A, it's global. So there's stuff from all over the world. Uh, and it also just show you how common these materials are and how many plants there are that will tan leather. Now tannin isn't just a single substance, it's a group of substances and compounds that are related to each other. And there are two major groups that are used for tanning, but we really don't need to talk about that. Some plants contain both of those and some contain just one or, the, or more of the other. And clearly there's areas where there's a lot less tanning material, but you know, I'm pretty sure there's going to be something within a few miles of almost anywhere in the world, except for maybe, you know, like the Arctic, far Arctic and really grassy plain areas, maybe. Now it's impossible for any one person to test all of these materials and get them and understand them. That's just not really feasible. People are fascinated by tanning with things that are kind of familiar that you might not think of tanning with. Well, apparently they do. Uh, the classics are acorns and tea leaves. Yes, you could probably tan hides with those. I know you can, but uh, I wouldn't really recommend starting with materials that are not really known to produce good leather. So in other words, if you can find something on that list that is proven and was maybe used in the tanning industry, or there's a good track record of some kind, Try to start with that and get some experience under your belt and make sure you understand the process before branching out too much to experiment. You don't want to just ask, will this tan leather? You want to ask, will it tan leather? And how much of it will it take to tan that leather? And what are the qualities that that material will impart to the leather? This, for instance, is an oak gall. These, I can gather, they grow in abundance. I can get them off white oak trees here in large quantities. They're easy to process, but every time I've tanned leather with these, they make a harsh, brittle leather. I could maybe use that to my advantage by blending a little bit of it in, or if I like the color, which is dark brown, or I'm trying to firm up a hide or something like that. 
but I'm just saying that trees impart different qualities to leather. And if you read through this list in literature that I'm publishing, then you'll see how often people mention the qualities that a material will impart to the leather. So um, there's lists of plants too that are just kind of, we know they contain a lot of tannin, but we don't know how much they were used or what qualities they impart. Now it's easier to experiment if you start small. I always recommend that people start with squirrel skins, especially if you live in an area with a lot of squirrels and a lot of woods. In the fall, they get crazy and aren't paying attention. They run out and get hit on the road all the time. Another great strategy is if you're gonna tan, say a deer hide or something around that size, you can cut off the legs and maybe the neck too even. It's called rounding off. It's done in the tanning industry a lot because the legs are often not that useful. It's just a small section, the leather's really thin and so it's not that big of a loss and then you don't have to go use all these extra materials to get that leather done. So especially if you're doing, you know, experiments on the same hide that you're going to tan, so you cut off the legs, you could run a whole bunch of experiments. Like if I cut the legs off of this deer hide over here to experiment with, I could test uh, pretty much all these materials that I showed you on little patches of skin and then say, oh yeah, I like this, I'm going to use this, or maybe I'll mix these together and see what happens. Now I know people are attached to say tanning a whole hide or a particular hide. People get really attached to certain hides and tanning them. Well, that's fine, but what you should really do is fold that thing up, stick it in the freezer, experiment on some small stuff to understand the process. This isn't paint by numbers with this traditional tanning. The materials uh, vary a lot in uh, their tannin content, for instance. Like this tree has a different tannin content in the bark at the base versus the bark at the top. This tree is growing in the sun. It has more tannin than the trees growing up there in the shade. In some species, the younger trees or the older trees have more or less tannin, or it's more or less extractable. And learning to tan uh, this kind of tanning is a little bit of a journey. You know, I'll, I'll try to help you out and you can have often produce good leather the first time if you actually listen, you know, and follow the directions. But it's not always easy to do that. Sometimes you have to try something, you know, get most of the information, try something, and then you're primed to absorb the rest of the information. So then you go back and watch my videos again, you're like, oh yeah, that's why that happened. I forgot he said that, etc. Anyway, if you do that and have a bunch of small pieces, then it's easier to experiment on some weird stuff that you pick up your used tea leaves or something like that. How much do you need? Everyone out wants to know this too. Well, this is another impossible to answer question because of the highly variable tannin content. I also am pretty sure that just straight up, you know, overall tannin content is not equivalent to tanning power. I guess you would say. And to make it worse, I never measure anything. I don't like measuring stuff when I'm tanning. I'm just trying to uh, do the work and develop an intuitive feel. I go more by looking at the liquor than I do anything else. Just to go out on a limb and make a guess, I'm gonna guess that you're gonna need, you know, anywhere from one to three times approximately of a good tanning material and that's dry weight of material to wet weight of skin so if i get a skin all prepared the hairs off if i'm going to take it off everything's ready to go one to three times as much dry material as wet skin so that could give you some place to start but what i would do is cook up one batch uh, maybe you could get you know it depends on how much how easy the material is to get too. like you have to plan ahead or you can just run out and get some more of it but maybe prepare up a batch uh, you know a big four gallon pot or something like that and start tanning in that and then you can watch the liquor and see how weak it gets and how fast and whether you need more concentrate to add and then you can go get or prepare some more materials all right finally some ideas of where to get material so if you have any woods around and you have any access to them, trees just die and fall over all the time. There's beavers in some areas, there's windstorms and snowstorms and lightning. But just in the last month, I've heard two really large trees fall out in the woods here. And every year I hear multiple big trees fall and a lot of them that I don't hear. Every time I go out, I find new trees. I just found a new tan oak tree that just fell over up here. There's also firewood cutters. They burn often, will burn large piles of bark every year because when they're splitting up the wood, pieces of bark fall off, no one wants them, they pile them up and torch them. If you just know anyone that burns firewood, hit them up and say, hey, could I go ground some bark off of your logs for tanning? Tree service people, if you're driving around and you see the tree service people, stop and talk to them and say, hey, look, I'm doing this thing, I wanna learn how to tan hides, etc." and uh, maybe they'll call you when they have an oak tree or something. Lumber mills, ditto. 
go check them out, ask around. The only thing about lumber mills and in general with all of this stuff is you don't want the bark to be dead and rained on a lot. So if it's just dead and dry and it was, you know, fresh and it dried up, that's totally fine. If it's fresh and it's been rained on, that's fine. But if it dies and dries out and then gets rained on a lot, it will actually leach out a lot of the material. Okay, that's just bark I'm talking about. There's also plants that you don't kill. Obviously, you know, nuts and fruits you can gather without killing the plant. But in all 48 of the United States, apparently, we have different species of sumac. Uh, besides poison sumac, which gives people rashes, uh, they all have a high tannin content. They could all be used to tan hides. Some of them make excellent leather. They've been used commercially, and you do not have to kill the plant. Mid to late summer, you just go out and pick the green leaves. And there are other plants that just grow back really well after they're cut. A lot of species of uh, willow or plants that grow in or near water like the willows that grow in waterways and right along riverbanks, they're often adapted to being flooded frequently. So that to the point where they'll actually become unhealthy and stagnant and really benefit from being cut or burned or flooded. So those you can just cut and in you know three to five years, you'll have a whole new crop of uh, branches with bark on them. So that information is available on my blog, skillcult.com slash blog is the main address, and hopefully that can serve as a long-term reference and archive for those looking for materials to tan leather in your part of the world. That's it. I will see you in the next tanning video. Used to tan leather with. Right on cue. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? About half of people were like, yes, the chickens are super annoying, and the other half were like, no, they're awesome, but they're really both. It's just a matter of keeping them far enough the way that they provide ambiance. You really don't want to jump, do you? It's only like four feet. <laughs> She's partially blind from a raccoon attack. She survived two raccoon attacks, in fact, the reason she doesn't have many tail feathers is because a raccoon tore them off.